If you watch high stakes poker or study with solvers, you've probably noticed a trend where bet size gets exponentially bigger as we approach the river. Small bets have become customary on the flop, and we usually only start betting larger than the size of the pot on the turn. The river is where we really go for it, and in tough games, it's not rare to see river bets many times the size of the pot. So why does this happen, and are there any exceptions to the rule? One way of approaching bet sizing is to think about it like ice skating. In a situation where we are not sure how sturdy the ice is, the last thing we want to do is put all of our weight on it. Instead, we first want to test the strength of the ice by applying a small amount of pressure. Only if it doesn't show any sign of cracking do we further increase the pressure. Ultimately, the aim is to put our entire weight on the ice, but by doing so gradually, we minimize the risk of falling through it. Similarly, we don't usually overbet the flop because there is a real danger of running into two pair or a set. The bigger we bet, the more bluff catches our opponent will fold, leaving behind a big proportion of nut hands in his continuing range. This isn't ideal for us, even when we have a good hand like top pair. Sure, we extract more value from the bluff catchers that do call, but too much of this value is returned to our opponent the times we run into a nut hand. In other words, instead of putting so much weight on the ice with a big bet, we want to first test its strength with a small one. Betting small forces our opponent to call with more bluff catches, resulting in a lower proportion of nut hands in his continuing range. The downside is that we don't build as big of a pot against his bluff catches, but this is more than made up for by how much we save against his nut hands. Betting small also has the effect of making our opponent race with most of his nut hands. This means that when he does call, he is much less likely to have us beat. This allows us to size up on the next street since we are now more confident that the ice will support our weight. Compared to the flop, we can use much bigger sizes on the turn without making the proportion of nuts in our opponent's range too large. Similarly, if he just calls our turn bet again, he is even less likely to have a strong head. We are now almost certain that the ice will hold and can put all of our weight on it by jamming the river. One exception would be when the turn or river introduces new strong hands in our opponent's range. On flush competing turns for example, we generally don't do much over betting. Even though our opponent has raised most of his strong hands on the flop, the turn brings in some new flushes in his range. We are now back in the same situation where the bigger we bet, the more we isolate ourselves against these flushes. And just like before, sizing down makes a lot of sense in order to reduce the proportion of flushes in our opponent's calling range. There are also some flops where the caller's range is naturally capped. On Ace-King-Deuce for example, the caller is missing most of the strong hands since he would likely have 3-bet preflop if he had Aces, Kings, or Ace-King. This allows us to start off with a big bet right away in order to maximize value against our opponent's bluff catches. In other words, we are already reasonably sure that the ice will hold our weight without having to first test it with a smaller bet.